Hi everyone, uh, John Davis with uh, 3ML LLC here in a pool house, obviously with my friend uh, the Swan, um, showing you how uh, basically I made an industrial interface for the Raspberry Pi and I'm using it to uh, control a uh, pool. So uh, this particular setup, which I'll go through, um, it's a uh, control box that, like I said, sits inside this pool house here and uh, monitors all pump operations and all fill operations for the uh, pool that's outside. So um, this is my first video. Obviously, I'm using very high value equipment to record this, um, and uh, hopefully uh, it doesn't look too bad. So without further ado, i am kind of show you the system here and how everything works. This is the main control panel here mounted inside of the, uh, the pool house and using my high quality pointer stick, which again, another uh, 3ML uh, high value production tool here, otherwise known as a broomstick. Um, the layout of the control panel is pretty standard for those familiar with, um, with industrial control panels. So up here we have our control power, which is 24 volts DC. We've got um, a pump control here, so some switches to do on, auto, and off. Fill control is also on, auto, and off. Uh, here we have the contactor for the motor with a flyback diode on it. And uh, also we'll be adding a uh, thermal protection overload to it. Uh, it's a one horsepower motor that controls the pump. And some relays and uh, power distribution, and then down here, uh, some uh, terminal blocks for uh, different I.O. connections coming in from different sensors, that type of thing. Um, this box here is a remote access uh, VPN unit uh, by a Finnish company called Tozibox, T-O-S-I-B-O-X. Probably one of the easiest, uh, um, fastest, and uh, most simple to set up uh, VPN boxes I've ever used. Uses open open VPN running on Linux, and uh, this little uh, USB part on top here is a 3G modem. So this is connecting over 3G uh, over to uh, you know basically wherever I am in the world, so I can monitor it. This guy right here is the uh, the rhubarb, as I call it. So the purple board from Oshpark. Um, that's a board that I, I designed. Um, it's an industrial interface to the Raspberry Pi. So we have a Raspberry Pi 3 on top, connected up to the board, which takes 24 volts uh, input power, and then all the I.O. Uh, digital in and digital out is 24 volt as well. And this little guy here is monitoring temperature on the side um, uh, of the box, and uh, this is more for me to test uh, how the Raspberry Pi does in a hot environment. This is not an air-conditioned building, um, and it is out in the middle of a field, basically. So in the summer, the highest temperature I've recorded inside the box is uh, you know, a daily average temperature of about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's been going all summer, and so far, uh, everything's been great. So, uh, um, oh, almost forgot. On the front here, some enunciator lights. The green light is uh, showing when we are filling, and the red light is showing when either the fill or the pump are in manual modes, either manual on or manual off. Otherwise, uh, everything runs automatically based on um, a fill switch or runs automatically based on um, you know time of day, if it's the pump or that type of thing. So again, uh, that's a 3ML piece right there. That's the uh, rhubarb industrial uh, interface for the Raspberry Pi. All of this is controlling a uh, 33,000 gallon uh, swimming pool. So we'll head outside and take a look at the filling apparatus. And before we do that, we might as well turn the pump back on. All right, let's head outside. So this box here is the remote box. Um, had to trench about 130 feet of conduit to get to it. But this is the uh, remote box that controls the uh, fill control, um, so the solenoid for filling, as well as the level control, the uh, level switch. So if we open up the box, which is NEMA 4X, by the way, we can see inside that uh, we've got, um, from the conduit coming in here, we've got our uh, fill sensor on these terminal blocks headed back to the uh, main pump control to uh, give us an idea of where the fill is. And also we have this solenoid here, which is a 24 volt um, normally open solenoid that is filling at uh, a little over, uh, it's five and a half gallons per minute or so um, from the tap that automatically fills the pool. Uh, I think I bought the solenoid on Amazon, wasn't that expensive, uh, maybe 40 bucks or so. And then uh, everything else in here is just your standard industrial type of hardware.
All right, and this part here is kind of the uh, uh, the brains, if you will, of the operation behind um, the filling uh, and also the uh, checking of the level in the pool. So basic idea behind it is, and in another video, I will um, take a look at the software and uh, how the software is written to integrate all this and make it work. But when the pump is off, uh, we take a level inside of the uh, um, inside of the skimmer here. So I've pulled that hose out. If we look inside of the skimmer, um, this is a 3D printed bracket. I designed it using Fusion 360 and printed it on my uh, uh, Wilson 2 printer. Uh, so this is a, a 3D printed bracket of my own design that uh, I attach this level sensor to, which is a uh, stainless steel level sensor from Automation Direct. And um, basically when the pump's off, uh, I take a series of readings over a set period of time and if the readings all agree with each other, then um, I know it's time to fill. And I fill at a certain interval, stop, and then recheck to see if we need filled again. So for people who don't like spiders, you can see there's a wonderful, god-awful looking thing in there. So we'll just leave that guy alone. But uh, um, interestingly, this is PLA, and I know that PLA and chlorine um, don't necessarily get along. I also know that uh, PLA is biodegradable, but this has been in here for about four months now. And um, I mean, it only cost me geez, probably, uh, you know, a buck, a buck and a half to print. So um, I keep an eye on it every week I come down or every couple weeks I come down, keep an eye on it. If it looks like it needs replaced, uh, I can just print one up and, and get it going. But basically, that guy lives inside of the uh, uh, skimmer and kind of hangs out and does a thing. So one of the benefits of having a Raspberry Pi run your pool is that uh, since it's a Linux computer, I can basically program it to do whatever I want it to do. So in this case, in addition to running the logic behind the pool, um, which is, includes the filling and, and running the pump and that type of thing, I actually have it doing some different functions. Uh, one of which, which is very important for us, is notification. So uh, some of these emails that I get, uh, which by the way, this is um, the email integration is done through Mailgun, um, which is written into the Python script uh, that actually um, runs the uh, the whole operation. But uh, whenever certain events happen, I have Mailgun, or I should say via Mailgun, I send messages out to um, to me and the other people who run the pool. But basically, uh, we have some soft limits, so uh, some soft limits for filling. Um, when the switches, uh, the pump switch and the fill switch are in manual off or manual on mode, um, we send some emails telling us so, so fill is automatically turned on. Uh, the pump is basically set on a timer, which is a cron job, so uh, it, it turns off at certain times and turns on. In this case, fill automatic mode was turned on at a certain point. Um, and this one, when a fill ends, uh, it emails me and tells me, hey, the fill added 63 uh, gallons of water. Also, too, and, and perhaps the most uh, interesting part in all of this, um, with the Raspberry Pi out in the field uh, via the Tozybox VPN unit, um, it is constantly connected to the internet via 3G, and I have a uh, SSH tunnel set up with a uh, server I have in the Amazon cloud. So whenever something happens um, out in the middle of nowhere at the pool, it uploads the data to my SQL server in Amazon, and then from the Amazon server, I can do um, some statistics and uh, basically just uh, remote logging of what's going on. But uh, the best thing about it is I can create um, uh, these summary emails. So uh, I get a video. I've got an IP camera out there that I'm using FFmpeg to uh, record video from. Um, so that takes uh, snapshots uh, at certain time intervals and then collates them together uh, throughout the day. And then I can get my panel temperature. I mentioned maximum panel temperature earlier. That's where I get that data from. Uh, number of fill events, how many uh, uh, gallons we added. And then on the server side in Amazon, um, I integrated the uh, uh, Weather Underground or Wonderground API. And I pulled down data um, from Wonderground for the location where the pool is at and basically uh, kind of collate that on a daily basis. So eventually what I'd like to do is I know we've always had to put water in the pool, but the, the ultimate goal is to correlate um, with some actual uh, statistical kung fu, which one of these variables down here is making me put in the most water. So uh, so yeah, that, that's Pool Boy. Um, again, just a kind of interesting thing that you put together in a, a neat use case for an industrialized uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, but if you like this, in the next video I can go over the software and how all this works and um, go from there. Hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you.